Yo, what are you saying? It's your boy Mars Chops, now I'm back again with another story time. And in today's story time, we're going to be talking about the time that my teacher betrayed me. So, yeah, before we get into this video, make sure you smash the like button and comment Viva Nigeria so we can hear more stories about me getting my ass beat in a foreign country. Many people that know me personally know that I was sent to the motherland, Nigeria, for a couple of years as a child. And there, I really truly suffered the real education system there. As many people know or may not know, in Nigeria teachers are allowed to beat the kids. So you could literally get yeeted off the roof of a building and nobody would really care. I mean there would be some sort of investigation but they could always lie saying you jumped off cause you know, mental illness. But today's video is a bit of a different situation really and truly it was a bit of a sticky one and I put my trust into the wrong person. So yeah, let's dive on in. So as, anyways the story starts with me going to school one day and somebody else is sitting in my usual seat. There's normally seating plans that you get in Nigerian schools, yes also in Britain and in Nigeria. They still have seating plans in their classes. Well this class was just like any other class where somebody else was sitting in my seat and obviously in the classes in Nigeria we have different age ranges so I was about 8 years old and I was in the same class as a 12 year old I don't really I didn't even ask I don't really understand but that's what happened so this there was like this 12 year old sitting in my seat and me as an 8 year old chubby 8 year old there's no way I'm gonna tell this guy to move out my seat so I slid into an empty seat next to a boy I'm gonna call Kazim. Well, Kazim and I, we never really talked. We did play football at lunch. It wasn't really football. We were just kicking around a empty plastic ball into like a goal made out of our blazers. But nevertheless, it was football. And Kazim kind of had a habit of putting his lunch money in his desk. And I think everybody knew that. I didn't know that at the time, but as the story goes on, I would eventually find out that that's what he usually did. So I sat next to Kazim half of the day and there was a time in which I went out to use the bathroom during a lesson and when I came back Kazim told the teacher that his lunch money was missing. Bear in mind this was a lesson before lunch but we had break beforehand and he left his desk empty on his own as everybody else would do. Obviously the first, you know, suspect of the case would have been me because I was sitting next to Kazim. So the teacher said to me, did you take his money? Obviously the 8 year old I am, I wouldn't lie and say, yeah, of course not, why would I take his money? Well, I told the truth, I didn't take the kid's money. And the teacher actually believed me, or so I thought. After the lesson, the teacher kept me behind and she kept on hounding me. Asking me again and again did he take Kazim's money. She had um she'd given Kazim, you know, money for lunch and she took me to the office, the teacher's office, the staff room. It wasn't really a room, it was kinda like a cupboard that, you know, the staff would just sit in. It was like a really big cupboard cupboard, but nevertheless it was a staff room. So we was there in the staff room, she was glaring me down and she kept on asking me, actually demanding that I tell her that I was the one who took Kazim's money and I knew I didn't take his money but after a fully grown adult is hammering down on an 8 year old, um, the 8 year old is gonna break, finally break and she said if you say that you're the one who took his money, nothing will happen to you, everything will be fine. And she kept on repeating that point so I said yeah, um, I was the one who took his money, you happy? And she like thank you. Went back to classes, I went back to my class, the classes resumed as usual and nothing really happened that day or the rest of the week. So me thinking that the teacher kept to their promise even though I had to lie about it. You know I thought I was safe, everybody thought they were safe. So. When my mom sent me to live in Nigeria, she sent me to go live with a cousin and that means my uncle became my legal guardian. So me and my cousin went to the same school. So my uncle came into school around lunchtime. 
like a week or so later and it was really it was really weird confusing that he would come to school at lunchtime but nevertheless me and my cousin were happy to see him so we ran up to him and we were asking him what are you doing there everything good everything's all right and obviously he didn't really tell us anything he didn't really need to tell us anything but um he said do me a favor both of you go and find the cane and we're thinking oh why are we gonna go find the cane for but you know he's he's my uncle he's my cousin's dad he told us to do something he's my legal guardian i'm gonna listen to his instructions so i went i found one of the canes in the teacher's office i gave it to him my cousin did the same and he sent my cousin up and he said i should follow him obviously now i followed him and something really really happened that i'm not really too proud to say and this will mix in with another story time that I tell later on on this channel. I'm not going to give the intricacies of what really happened in this scene. But I will go into detail in a future story time which I'll probably be doing next. Which is like a continuation to this but still has the same elements of the story of this. So after I followed my uncle with the two canes that me and my cousin both selected from the staff's office. My headmaster... We went to go see our headmaster at the back of the school and this is where um all the other students were having a lunch break praying buying food playing football enjoying themselves and i've never really talked to the headmaster throughout my time being in the school even when my uncle came to register me in the school i was speaking to his secretary all the time so i'd never even seen the headmaster until that day all i know is that his name was on our school books so I was really, really confused when I saw the headmaster there. Then like I saw my teacher emerge from his shadow which was really, really scary at the time and she was kind of ninja like the way how she did it. So even by that point I still didn't even put two and two together. I was just like wow. So my teacher's here, my uncle's here and the headmaster's here. What is going on? Then um, the, the headmaster said, do you know what, what you're doing here? I was like, nah, I don't. Like, I know my uncle says, like, there's anything the matter, something going on with my cousin. Then he was like, nah, um, it's you. He said, are you sure you don't know what you're doing here? I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I literally don't know. My uncle looked at me and he was kind of disappointed. And I was thinking, what is actually going on? I like, and I haven't failed any classes lately. <laughs> I know I failed my classes last time, but not this time. But I'm pretty sure I did hide the report card. Maybe that's what I'm getting in trouble for. But it turns out that it was for the Kazim situation because my teacher opened her mouth and she said he stole a student's lunch money and he lied about it. But I found out that he's the one who took it. Obviously, I jumped into action to defend myself and I said, How? can you say that I stole the money when I told you all this time I didn't take his money and you told me that if I said I took it nothing will happen obviously the headmaster looked at my teacher and she said nah I didn't say that why did I say that obviously now when a fully grown woman an adult is arguing with an eight-year-old in a professional environment really and truly people will take the adult side and to this day I don't really blame my uncle and my headmaster for believing my teacher's side of the story because I was a kid she was a paid adult doing her job and a little incident like this they'll think why would she lie and maybe they thought I was trying to save face but you know what let's leave it as that so my headmaster told me to go stand in the middle of the scent of a center in the car park that was there it was like a car park type of garage situation for some reason it was open it was never really open whenever we had lunch or break and he told me to stand on one leg so in the position i was was like trying to keep my balance at the same time that was like a normal punishment and i was like all right then that's all right and then my uncle gave the cane to my headmaster and my headmaster beat me really and truly he gave me lashes and I cried and cried and cried and everybody who was at break 
at lunchtime playing football they all stopped even even all the kids that were eating stopped looked at me getting my ass beat and they were all shocked they didn't know what happened i was crying my ass off my cousin was waiting at the corner to console me after all the beatings were done and really and truly that's how that's how the saga at the school ended by the time i got home my uncle asked me to explain i told him the truth and to this day i don't really know if he thinks that i took the money or not but if he is listening to this video and um, probably he may not he may not even be listening or watching I didn't take that kid's money. The moral of the story is, is that when adults in this world tell you some things that are too good to be true, really and truly, they are too good to be true. And if that teacher I had in Nigeria ever comes across this video, I need to say, you're wrongin', really and truly. Why would you play with somebody's emotions like that? There's no need and you really did mess up my day. And I'll explain how that happens in the next story time. Thank you for listening or watching this video. Really and truly, I did want to make another story time. I just didn't really know what topic to discuss. And as all great ideas come from when you're using the toilet, I just thought about this. I was looking back at my life and I was thinking maybe there should be a new series I start on story time called FFS funny foreign stories when i tell you my stories that i think are funny that came from me in i don't know nigeria and all the other countries that i visited so thank you guys for tuning in to this video if this is the first time you've listened to my ugly voice i can't really say ugly mug on this because it's story time but if you like this video make sure you like and you comment down below if you want to hear more story times like this you know like subscribe hit the notification bell to get notified each time i post and you know what i will see you in the next story time take care of yourself new video coming out next week on friday in a bit Tomorrow.